Hey, you know, when we first got started with goats, I would have really loved it if I could find a single video that had several different types of fences that you could use and maybe what they might cost and how they worked. That would have made it where I could make an educated decision on what maybe would fit our operation best. Well, today I'm going to cover that. We've done four different types of fences, and we've tested and used now four different types of fences. So I can tell you how they work, and then I'm going to tell you kind of what they cost. Also, we're going to do our first collaboration with a couple of guys that I've got to know a little bit, and I really like them. So stay tuned. We'll let you know who we're collaborating with and what we're going to talk about. Well, here we go. This is going to be our first collaboration, and we're excited about it. Mike from Fowler Family Farms is going to be talking about everything you need to do to get ready for goats before you get them. Uh, Josh over at Bodart Kikos, he's going to be talking about what to do after the kids hit the ground, how to take care of them. Both of these guys are great guys. Uh, they've got a lot of the similar beliefs that we have, similar business that we have, and just a lot of the same interests. So it's a nice fit and I hope to do more with them. When you get done here watching this video, if you haven't already, go to their channel, watch the, the adjoining video that I just told you they were gonna be talking about it. You can find it in my description. Like it and subscribe to them. You'll like what you see. I'm gonna be talking about four different types of fences that I've built and used. I'm gonna to try to give you costs and pros and cons. You know, the most important part of any fence is the brace. In most cases, it determines success or failure of the fence. There's several different ways you can build one. I typically will do it in two ways. I'll either drive the uprights in the ground, then weld them up, or I'll weld the brace up first and cement the brace in the ground second. When I'm driving my pipe in the ground, I'll use two and seven eighths inch pipe for the entire brace. I'll drive about 52 inches in the ground and leave about 56 inches above the ground. The uprights are 10 foot apart. Then I'll put a horizontal at 53 inches on top and one angle pipe just below the horizontal. I always try to be careful and angle down in the direction that my fence is pulling because I've messed that up before. It'll work, but it doesn't have as much strength. This brace is strong enough for any of the four types of fences I'm going to talk about today. The other brace is going to be made up of two and three eighths inch pipe. It's made at the shop, then cemented in the ground later. Sometimes it's easier to do it this way because it's just handy to weld everything up and cut everything in the shop. The dimensions are basically the same as the uprights, except it's only eight foot apart and not 10 foot apart. The amount of cement needed is dependent on the size of the hole you dig. So if you're feeling frisky and you dig a great big hole, guess what? That means you need lots of cement. <laughs> These braces need time to set up. For us, it usually takes probably around three days. I'd feel comfortable using these braces for all the fences except the fixed knot fence. The fixed knot fence, when you pull it tight, you're going to be putting a lot of force on it. And so I want to use the best brace I make, which is the first one. This smaller brace is a good system if you can't weld or if you don't have access to a welder or anything like that because usually there's a welding shop in town or outside of town or somewhere close to you that'll build these braces for you. And then you can just haul them out to the spot, dig your holes, and you're ready to go. But because there's so many different ways you can do a brace, and all four of my different fences basically use the same type of brace. I'm going to leave it out of my final cost calculation. So just remember, don't skimp on your brace. 
That's probably the biggest mistake you can make because it's the key to all of your fences working like they're supposed to. You've got to get them tight and without a good brace you can't get them tight. For cost on the different types of fencing, I'm going to calculate it for a quarter mile stretch with a brace at each end. This will make everything even. Then I'll divide that 1,320 feet, which is a quarter mile, into the amount it costs and give you a cost per foot. Now remember, all these prices were as of January 1st, 2022, and don't include taxes or shipping. They could change at any time, and the way the country's going right now, they probably will. This is just to kind of give you an idea, so it'll get you pretty close. The fixed knot is a fence that I use if I want to make something 100% goat proof. This is based on my experience so far. If I have a property that needs a perimeter fence, this is what I build. I want to make sure the animals are going to stay where I put them. I know of two brands of wire that you can use. There may be more, but I was only able to locate two when I was looking. One is called Tornado Wire and the other is called Stay Tough. They appear to be about the same as far as their, how many horizontals they have and their, and their spacing and, and all that kind of stuff. But I went with the Stay Tough, which is 1348-12660, because I'm more familiar with the brand and it was less expensive, mainly because it's close to me. And so I didn't have to have any shipping or anything like that. I was able to go pick it up. It's 48 inches tall. It has 12 inch wide squares that start at two inches at the bottom and gradually increase in height until they get to about six inches tall at the top. It also has about 13 horizontals. Actually, that's not about, it's exactly. They have exactly 13 horizontals. You can save a little money by, by buying a 660 foot roll rather than a 330 foot roll, but that 660 foot roll is gonna cost you $633. For a quarter mile, I need two of them, so it's gonna cost me $1,266. Now don't expect to go up there and grab that 660 foot roll of wire and throw it in the back of your pickup. It's heavy. The wire is high tensile galvanized. That means it's extremely tough, but difficult to work with. Some things you'll need in addition to the wire and braces are gripple clips. Gripple clips will make it easy cheesy to attach all 13 horizontal wires to your braces. Their total cost will be about $45.50. You need 26 of them, that's 13 on each brace, so 13 on, each, on both ends. You'll need a stretch bar to get it good and tight, and like I said earlier, it's critical that you do your braces right so you can get your fence good and tight, and that applies to all of these. The stretch bar is going to set you back $160.75. To pull that stretch bar, you'll need two 3,000 pound chain hoists. They cost around $86 a piece for a total of $172. High tensile galvanized wire will absolutely destroy, pit, break most normal pliers or cutters. So you really need something that's going to hold up to it. And that's where I found Nipix cutters and that's K-N-I-P-E-X. They're $57.95 and worth every penny. I would not attempt to do this without Nipix pliers. You can get away with bolt cutters, but the Nipix are just so handy. You can do it with one hand, and it's just wonderful to use those. I use the same T-post in all four of these fences. The only difference is how often I put the post. So for the fixed knot, I put a 1.33 six foot tall T-post ever 20 feet. They cost $5.85 for a total of $386.10 and that's for 1,320 feet. That brings the total, grand total for fixed knot fencing to $2,721.30. Now remember, like I said, that's for a quarter mile or 1,320 feet. So you can divide that cost into the 1,320 feet and it gives you $2.06 per foot. Remember, that's excluding the cost of the braces. Some cons for the fixed knot are cost, obviously. It's difficult to work with, what I've already talked about. 
and guard dogs can still dig under it if they're so inclined, and that does happen because some of my dogs, that's one of the things that they'll do on occasion. If a coyote or if a pig passes through and, and somehow gets out and they can't figure out how to go after them, they'll dig a hole and, buddy, they can dig it fast. Pros are, and here's the biggest pro, I've never had a goat get out of it. Even with hot does on one side of the fence and a very willing buck on the other side. I've actually used FixKnot in other applications for 20 years, so I've had a little bit of a history with it, and I can tell you from experience it's made to last. It has about a 20-year warranty, if I remember right. The knots are designed in such a way that they stay. That wrap knot design it has, a, has a tendency to not want to slide right or left, up or down. Now, if a car hits it and then a wrecker pulls the car backwards and the bumper hooks the fence, it'll move a square. But other than that, it's pretty difficult to move one of those squares. The 12 inch spacing is especially good for goats because it allows a goat to get their head back out if they decide to put their head through. At least it has for us so far. Except for that one time when I drove a T-post right in the middle of a 12 inch square, which that means it cut it in half and it made a 6 inch square. That's a no-no with goats. Consequently, I had one get its head stuck. So be careful when you put your T-post in and you won't have that issue. It also resists smashing when a goat may put their front feet up on the top of it or at least three quarters of the way up and rest on it while they're eating or whatever. It won't smash. Guard dogs must dig under to get out. They're not going to go through a hole. There is no hole. They'll have to go under. Of all the fences, this is the most set it and forget it which is what I like, especially for a perimeter fence. Like most people that start with goats, I tried to find the cheapest fence around that I knew about. Field fence was it. I got Sheffield 939-6-11. It's 39 inches tall, 6 inch wide squares that are 3 inches tall starting at the bottom and gradually increase in height until it reaches the top where it's 6 inches tall. It's also around nine horizontal wires. I got 330 foot rolls because they could be easily handled. The cost was $285.75 a roll. Wow. I needed four rolls for a total of $1,139. You'll still need a stretch bar that cost $160.75 to make sure this one is tight. Maybe that'll help. That also means you'll need the same chain hoist as before, and the two totaled $172. You can easily wrap this wire onto the braces so no special clips will be needed. I'm going to put Nipex cutters on all the fence tools. $57.95. They're that good. And you need them. Same T-posts every 15 foot cost $514.80 for a grand total of $2,000. $898.75. That's for 1,320 feet, which equals about, drum roll, $2.20 per foot, not counting braces. Let me cover the pro first. Notice I said pro, singular, as in only one. It's easy to handle. <laughs> now for some of the cons. As soon as some kind of animal hits it, it will lose its shape. Deer, pigs, Dogs, goats, sheep, donkeys, horses, bobcats, cattle, calves, fawns, grasshoppers, butterflies. Okay, maybe not grasshoppers and butterflies, but what I'm trying to say is it's not tough at all. It will lose its shape when something hits it. Which means, unless you can keep all your animals and all of the wild animals from touching it, in a year or less, you may not have much of a fence left. Now, let me throw in that it's more expensive than the fixed knot, and that should help you with your decision. But if it doesn't, I still have around 20 rolls in the barn that I would be willing to sell. Wink, wink. <laughs> the third type of fence is total electric. Three-wire electric is what I'm currently building. If you're going to do this, use only 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire. A 4,000 foot roll costs $142.75. I'll stretch three wires so the 4,000 foot will be enough to do the entire deal. I also need some insulated underground cable for gates and jumpers and stuff like that. 100 foot costs around $21.75. 100 foot of half inch poly pipe 
drip line irrigation pipe is what I use to put the underground cable in. And I use it on the wire at each brace. I can get 100 foot for around 10 bucks. Each of the three wires will need an end insulator strainer at each brace and an insulator on each T-post, at least three of them, for a total of $32.37 for insulators. Mentioning T-posts, I put them every 40 feet for this fence, which means it costs $193.05. To tighten each of the three wires, you'll need a wire strainer. Three of them cost $15.90. And last but not least, you need at least one switch to shut the fence off in case you need to do some work. It's pretty important. It costs $6.75. Now for tools that you'll need to do this fence. First, you need a spinning jenny to spool the wire out. It costs $120. And of course, you need Nipix cutters. They're still $57.95. And finally, to tighten those three wire strainers, you need a wire strainer tool it's $9.75 for a grand total of $602.02, which comes out to about $0.46 cents per foot. Yay. Okay, I hear you. Yes, I forgot about the Energizer, ground rods, and the lightning diverter. The Energizers are going to be extremely specific for your application and will probably be the most expensive part of the fence. The best thing to do is talk to someone who can give you an idea of how much power you need for your application. Do not go off of the size of your acreage. You need to determine how much fence you're going to have, what kind of brush might be on the fence, or what kind of load, and then look at the jewels on the charger, not the acreage. The higher the jewels, the more power. The worst thing you can do with goats is be underpowered. The cons for the total electric are, if you touch it, it feels like someone hits you in the chest as hard as they can, so don't touch it. If they short for some reason, the entire fence is potentially off. Therefore, you need to check them regularly. This is probably one of the biggest cons. You need to check them regularly. I had one kid go through the three-wire electric one time. The other part of that story is he wouldn't go back through it, so I had to take him through a gate. That tells me he had never been shocked before when he went through. The pros are cost, easy to build, and easy to expand. It's great to use for interior paddocks. The guard dogs also learn to respect it very quickly, which is a bonus as far as keeping your dogs from going outside where the goats are. It gives goats a new appreciation for all types of fencing. They never know which one they can touch and it's extremely fun to watch them the first time. <laughs> the final fence I'm gonna talk about is a single wire electric with an old existing fence. In my case, it was a five wire barbed wire fence. I used the original bracing and had to replace some of it. The first thing I did was restore the old barbed wire. I restretched it, reclipped, and fixed any posts that needed it. Then I added the single wire using the same stuff as the three wire electric design except only one wire. I use special offsets that you can buy and connect straight on the barbed wire. Don't waste your money on these. You're better off using a T-post over 40 foot. The 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire cost $142.75 for 4,000 feet just like before but we only need 1,320 feet of it. That's actually a cost of $47.11. The underground wire and half inch poly pipe is the same. It was $21.75 and $10 respectively. You'll still need an end strainer insulator at each brace and a single insulator at each T-post. It'll cost $1.55 and $9.24 respectively. You'll only need one wire strainer, $5.30, and one switch, $6.75. Now for tools. Wire strainer tool is $9.75. The spin and jitty is $120. And last but not least, all of these lists, you guessed it, the Nipix cutters, $57.95. This makes a total for 1,320 feet 
of a single wire electric cost $449.91. That means 34 cents per foot. Don't forget my previous explanation for an energizer. You will need a powerful energizer. Some cons are electric right next to a grounded fence can be a pain because if an animal somehow pushes the electric into the old fence, the electric will catch on it possibly and it will short the fence. So like previously, you will need to check it regularly. Until your goats have been introduced to electric fence, I wouldn't count on this holding them. If the goats find a high spot, they will go under and trust me, they will check it. Pros are the cost. It's the cheapest on the list. It also is the easiest and quickest to build. So to sum everything up, the electric fences are some of the best fences to use for interior fencing. They're extremely easy to build and cost effective. However, if you're not available to check the power on the fence and fix any issues fairly often, I would stay away from them. If you decide they're right for you, then be careful with your post selection. Use T-Post. Don't let someone talk you into using fiberglass. If you have any deer at all, fiberglass posts are worthless. They'll splinter at the bottom. The fiberglass flexes so much that if anything hits the fence, they'll easily wrap the wire, which is normally on a grounded fence, and short it out. So it's just not worth it. I've been using fiberglass posts and T-posts for nearly 20 years. Learn from my mistakes. Spend a little more money and get a T-post. The field fence seems to be the same problem that everybody starts their goat fence with, including me. It doesn't last at all. It's expensive for what you get. Don't do it. However, the fixed knot fence is the best I've ever used. I've never had a goat get out. I've never had to do anything to the fence once it was built. It's a set it and forget it system. It is the second most expensive, but if you need to build a perimeter fence, it's well worth it. And that's the main reason I use it. You'll notice that on mine, I have a single electric wire along the top. It's not necessary, but I do it so I've got an, a trunk line. I've got an easy access to electric fence. So I, if I want to build a cross fence or an interior fence, which is what I use the electric for, it's ready to go. I hope this helps somebody when they get into building fence for their goats or their other livestock. It would have helped me when I first got started. I've got links in the description to detailed instructions for building all of these fences except for the field fence, and you probably don't want to do it anyway. But don't let me steer you away from it if you're dying to. Remember, I've got those that wire for sale in the barn. <laughs> but I would like to thank Josh and Mike uh, for just getting together with us and, and, and putting this together. It, it's been kind of fun, and you know we've spent months kind of talking about it and trying to think about how we wanted to do it. So hopefully it all turns out where y'all can get something out of it. So thanks to those guys. Don't forget to go look at the link down in my description to both of their videos and like and subscribe to them as well as us if you haven't. So thanks for watching. We enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.